Are you an HR department of one trying to figure out how to balance task and strategy while keeping up with changes in regulatory compliance? Do you need a fresh outlook on old topics? Then stop what you're doing, grab your coffee, and get ready to recharge. If you have people, you have problems to solve and things to do. Your host is Brenda Neckvottle, a 20-year human resource professional, ready to explore the HR industry with veterans of business and life with fresh eyes and new ideas. Learn about the rapidly evolving changes in employment law around the country, as well as new tactics to deploy and build engagement in your work. If you're looking to implement new practices to make your job easier in HR, then this podcast is for you. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Best Practices in Human Resources podcast. I am Brenda, the HR lady, and I'd like to thank you for coming on and listening to the show. If you are a returning listener, thank you so very much. You guys absolutely rock. I love how you guys keep coming back for yet another episode. And if you are a first time listener, welcome. We are not here to scare you away. (laughs) I'm here to help share with you the strategic and tactical HR knowledge so you can master the what and the how in this field because it is complicated sometimes and we are in the human business, which means a greater number of dynamics in the workplace to balance and manage. So I have a, uh, something to ask for you guys. Would you guys do me a favor? Look, there's some really great people just like you out there. There's actually more great people than we're giving credit. And you know what? They find this podcast and we get all sorts of really great feedback. But what will help is if you guys leave a five-star review. The reason why is that it actually changes the algorithm and it helps really great people like yourself that are looking for really good information out there. So please go ahead, hit us up on Apple uh, iTunes, uh, where your Apple Podcasts, over at Stitcher if you're listening because you have an Android phone, or if you don't have either and you just don't have a podcast, you can go to iHeartRadio and actually go ahead and hit us up over there. But we got, (laughs) I had to read this. I just had to read the name of the user because I just thought it was hilarious. I love this. Uh, When you have Mama Monkey in your name, you, you're, your review just has to get read and it was really gracious thank you so much it says as she writes this is the best information informational podcast out there today i can't believe how much i've learned by the topics she's led and definitely more than the studying i've done on the side not only does she teach by information but she takes real life situations to further get the point across she's humble enough to get those that reach out to her She's humble enough to help those that reach out to her. She's approachable. Brenda, thank you for changing my life. I see things from a whole new uh, HR best practice perspective. Oh, my gosh. That is so sweet. That is awesome. Thank you so very much. And you know what? You just have Mama Monkey in your name. I love it. I think it's great. I have a a friend of mine. She's in the trucking business, and she refers to herself as Mother Trucker. (laughs) So I love that kind of creativity. Oh, it's great. Okay, listen, got some updates for you. First off, the book release, it is happening June 5th. It is locked and loaded, ready to go. All we have to do is flip the flip the switch on Amazon and that thing is up and that and so the book is coming out on June 5th. Now is the time to get your pre-copy, your pre-sale copy. <clears throat> so you do that by going to brendathelady.com. And the book is, is called Best Practices in Human Resources, How to Claw Your Way from Wannabe to VP. If you click to- a shop at the top, it'll actually bring you to the storefront uh, where you can go ahead and, and actually purchase your pre-sale order. Now, when you purchase your pre-sale order, if you are a VIP, you get a little extra from me. If you are one of my clients or customers or just somebody jumping in, everybody actually will be included in a $250 value giveaway care package and a random drawing, which by the way, the value of this has gone up tremendously. So it's actually over $250 in value. Uh, It's loaded with all sorts of good stuff. It's like Christmas shopping for me. I love this. And uh, I see something as I'm out and about and I'm like, ooh, you know what? That'll look really great in the care package. And so that's where it's going. (laughs) So, all right. So I got something for you to keep your eyes open for. We've got a free HR assessment that I'm going to be launching here. So just watch for it. All right. It's a new tool that you can use to help perform a visual gap analysis and will help you channel where you need to focus your efforts, especially if you've actually never done HR before. And if you don't quite know how or what to do next, once you get your 
once you get your assessment done, uh, we're going to be actually launching the HR Compliance and Strategy Masterclass. It's going to be releasing soon, so definitely keep your eyes open for that. And if you're looking for more immediate information, uh, which I strongly recommend because so much is changing so quick. Holy cow, it's crazy. Uh, we have the HR resource site, and you you can jump into that. That is actually a really a really great tool that we are evolving and building, and it is available to you. It's very affordable. Uh, it's over at brendahrlady.com. <clears throat> if you uh, click up at the top and the, t- and the margins, you'll see the HR resource site. Jump in. You'll actually get access to current HR news, which includes six major employment category- categories. Categories? <laughs> categories, COVID updates, employment law, legal updates, litigation, collective bargaining and unionization, which is a hot button right now. If you have not been listening, you need to listen to the episode called The Storm is Coming. It is it's constantly developing right now. It's crazy. Uh, for government contractors, affirmative action, EEO and reporting, and OFCCP updates, as well as disability, where you get real-time comprehensive updates for individual states. Oh, there's over 100 streaming articles from nearly 70 different resources across the U.S. and one in Canada, because we do have a few Canadians that tune in. So we want to help you guys out as much as possible. Um, there's downloadable HR tools, videos, case law summaries, and an invite for those who are want to join in clubhouse where you, i spend like four days out of the week playing in so um and i think i i think i'm up to doing i think it's like seven or eight sessions now a week over in clubhouse there's a lot of really good and then i do some other stuff with some other people so it's a lot of fun um to get the hr resource site you get all of that all of that for only $9 a month. And not to mention you become my VIP. So you get all of that for less than three cups of coffee in one week. All of that. I don't even know what I spend. I don't even spend $9 a week on anything. I spend more than stuff. <laughs> more than $9 of stuff a week. So hugely affordable is one of the things I created it because I wish I had this when I was growing up in HR and uh, becoming my VIP means that you get an invite to a special closed Facebook group and where you guys get the best of me. So uh, we get to be channeled. We're growing a, a wonderful community over there, some really great people. And uh, that is the that is an awesome place to land. And you are also welcome to join us in our open group over at, well, it's kind of open. It's kind of closed. It's just for HR people over at the Next Gen Women in Facebook group. So that is an awesome place to be. All right, so a while back we had Will Branham on. He is a friend, very good friend of mine. He's a retired Navy SEAL. Love that man to death. And he actually shared in his interview with us the benefits of using broad spectrum CBD, which is no THC. And if you haven't heard Will's interview, there's another one for you. Go back and listen to episode number 78. So my question is, have you tried it yet? If you haven't, you can still get 20% off on your first order at nw-recovery.com. Now the website is nw-recovery.com by using the code NAKEDHR. And the benefits of, T- of THC-free CBD, ooh, I don't think you could say that three times fast. Um, you know what? It reduces inflammation. It settles the mind. <clears throat> it activates your endocannabis system. I can't believe I said that and didn't hurt my tongue. And it has a lot of amazing benefits. I sleep well. I have very little information inflammation. Of course, I don't I don't drink soda anymore. Like I don't I, a diet. Oh my gosh. Diet root beer used to be my crutch. No kidding. Uh, A&W diet root beer used to be my crutch. And I, I don't drink any of that stuff now. I actually tried a little the other day and it, it didn't even taste like it tasted so gross. And um, but you know, I've been focusing on bringing inflammation down in my system. And I'm telling you right now, those gummies are absolutely awesome. You sleep like a little baby every single night. And I do so much better because I'm getting that recuperative sleep that I need. So that's pretty awesome. So definitely go check them out. Also, you know what? I want to share with you 
uh, some information about a company that I recently have been talking to that I think can help you out with a potential benefit option. So Forest Capital Management is an independent financial advisory firm that helps small and medium businesses um, really optimize their retirement plans. So whether you sponsor a 401k or 403b, a pension or, or something else, it's hard to stay up to date on the changing industry landscape. Yeah, no kidding, right? We learned that just over in the regular side. So Forest Capital Management helps plan sponsors navigate these changes by focusing on improving the fiduciary governance of the plan, which if you're not familiar with, you need to link up with these guys. They also look at benchmarking plan design and reducing plan expenses, which who doesn't want that, right? So to learn more about or actually re receive a free plan analysis, go ahead and contact one of our friends over the program. Uh, he is a, he's, his name is Alex Clegg, okay? And you can email him over at A-C-L-E-G-G -G at forestcapm.com. Let me say that again. It's A-C-L-E-G-G -G at Forest, F O R E S T C A P M dot com. And that's Forest Capital Management. He is one of the advisors over there. He's a cool dude. Uh, definitely reach out to him and see what it is that he can help with you guys. All right. So today, folks, the information that is available through this podcast is for, in fact, informational purposes only and not for the purpose of providing any form of legal advice. You should contact your attorney to obtain legal advice with respects to any particular issue. If you do not have an employment attorney, you may contact us and we, we may refer you to one through our affiliates program. All right. So today I've got an awesome guest. Um, I have I'm part of a a group. So like you guys come into my little world and we talk about all kinds of, you know, things, how you can keep your spirits up and, and, you know, driving forward. And, you know, we've got our own little community. Well, I, I need my mentorship as well. And so I have a community that I tap into. And my guest today is a member of that community. She's really awesome. Her name is Jessica Dennehy. And Jessica is an attorney. <clears throat> and during the pandemic, she... Uh, the just she took on an awesome program and I'm, I don't want to spill it but Jessica just released a best-selling book called Pivot and Slay <laughs> I absolutely love it I think it's so great and uh and we're gonna talk a little bit about that but Jessica is actually going to talk about how to pivot and slay and you know what look I strongly recommend that you guys get a copy of her book. So here's my interview with Jessica. You're going to love it. You're going to enjoy it. Look, take this, crush the day, make the most of everything that you got coming at you. Get the book and look, light it up. There are approximately 2,500 members of the U.S. Special Operations Community who transition out of active duty military service every single year. The Honor Foundation has dedicated its mission to serving these elite individuals on their journey to prepare for life once they take off the uniform. In the past few years, we've begun our own journey to reach this number, launching three physical campuses in San Diego, California, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and near Wilmington, North Carolina, along with a virtual campus to reach members of the community anywhere on the planet. I spent 26 years in the special operations community as a SEAL. I graduated from THS program, I served on the board of directors, and now I'm proud to lead this organization into the future to continue assisting these transitioning service members and their families. Our dedicated team, our world-class program, and our incredible tribes of supporters are standing by to help THF alumni and future fellows, and are committed to providing the best possible support system and resources to better serve this community. Our vision for the Honor Foundation is clear to impact every transitioning service member from the U.S. Special Operations Enterprise through our programs and support, and to be a catalyst for overhauling the entire DOD transition program. It's a big task, but the community deserves it, and we're driving full steam ahead to make this a reality. If you've been inspired with what the Honor Foundation's done in the last five years, I welcome you all to join us as we craft the next chapter in defining what it means to serve others with honor for life. Folks, I've got somebody extra special coming on today who I am super excited to have on. She's an awesome human being. 
Um, we've gotten to know each other. Oh man, it's been, it's hard to believe it's only been what, four months. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We've been gotten to know each, we've been gotten to know each other. I have the worst grammar right now. It's terrible. We, no one's judging you. Don't worry. Oh my word. <laughs> So we've gotten to know each other the last several months. We just, we've been spending some time together down in Dallas as we travel in and out. And I would love to welcome everybody. It's actually, she's one of my favorite new Spartans, uh, Jessica Dennehy. <laughs> she's awesome. How are you, ma'am? I am doing amazing. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh. I'm so, I'm excited for you. I'm really excited for you because you just had a Amazon best-selling book hit the market, and literally within a day, you became an Amazon best-selling author, which is fantastic. Congratulations! Thank you. I'm still glowing. I think from that. You are. I, yeah, I, you I just, are. I'm so happy, <laughs> and I'm so humbled, and it just was such an amazing experience from start to finish. Yeah. And I can't wait to do it all over again. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm just so excited for you. I think that's absolutely fantastic. So it's great. So the name of your book, and I love this is pivot. I wish I could steal it, pivot and slay. You can't cause I trademarked it. I know oh. you did. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> There, you know, it's like, I have those moments where I hear everybody else's genius and go, damn, I wish I thought about that. <laughs> God, that's so good. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. And it's it, the funny thing is the reason that I love it so much is because it's so authentic to me. It is. And who I am and my life. And it really just speaks volumes about what I've done with my own life. And that's kind of, that's what the book's about, right? I mean, you have to adapt and I guess I've gotten some pushback on the word pivot. Cause I think people misinterpret it. It's not just like a random turn. you know, like screech out of the way because you're nervous or scared. It's actually very methodical and purposeful. You see a hurdle coming at you and you purposefully get around it yeah, by yeah. being adaptive and creative. Yeah. And that's how you slay it. That's how you win. And I think we've all done that in our life more than we probably realize. Yeah. So, yeah, but we've heard, I think, you know, that's the thing is like, you know, since COVID has been going on for a while, like we have this preconceived notion and we have this definition that we relate the word pivot to. And, And it's not what you're referring to at all. It's, it is being able to make imperfect action. Well, I don't want to spoil it. I'm going to let you talk about it. But before we do that, because I'm so excited about the book, um, do me a favor. Would you please help can I give people a little bit of a background of who you are, what you do? So we get some some context in here because yeah. yeah, I have a very diverse background, but I promise you it is all connected and has gotten <laughs> me to this very moment. All right. I'm a business attorney. That is what I do by trade. I was a Wall Street regulator for almost a decade. And then I pivoted into small business ownership. I had an idea, um, my business partner and I came up with a, an idea that really served a need in the marketplace 10 years ago for luxury barber shops, and it took off. And I ended up leaving my Wall Street job to build and scale that company. And I got it to the point where I didn't have to be there all the time, and I was able to kind of diversify Um, Along the way, I became really into mindset because I went through a difficult time in my life and I couldn't get myself out of it. I was, I was kind of stumbling and I was, I was struggling to pivot. And what got me out was working on my mindset through fitness and yoga. And so I've become a yoga instructor and now I'm coaching other business owners with this background, this legal background, my mindset background my small business background, and I'm bringing all of those elements to my coaching company, which is called Pivot and Slay. (laughs) Why I wrote the book, not because of the pandemic, because the pandemic was not a pivot for me. The pandemic was a proof of concept. I had been working on my mindset for years before this, working as a business owner, learning the ropes of scaling a company, coming from a Wall Street background and using that background to figure out how to apply those tools to my own company. And when the pandemic hit and my shops, my barber shops were shut down, it really proved, I proved to myself in that moment that I had created the mindset I needed 
that come out of anything on top. And, you know, I started with my coaching company and just took off from there. And so I think, you know, we don't really know if the things we're implementing are working until we are hit with a difficult time. And if you sink, then you know, you have more work to do. And if you soar, then you know, the work you've done has gotten you to this moment prepared to adapt to anything. Yep. You're at the right moment. Yeah. This is fantastic. That is awesome. I love that. Okay. So let's talk about the book. Okay. So share, share with them what the premise of the book is about. The book is all about adapting your mindset for success. And it, it kind of, I take you through my own life and how I've learned to adapt to many hurdles that have been thrown at me. And Really, I learned a lot about myself in writing the book. And for any of you thinking about writing a book, it's such an amazing way to reconnect with yourself. And what I realized is that in my life, I have constantly chosen imperfect action over indecision. And one of my chapters is actually called Wrong Decision Over Indecision, Mm -hmm. because I really believe in this concept that if you do not move forward and and try and take a risk, you are going to stand still. And that to me is the worst thing you can do, because when you're standing still, you are not growing, you are not um, problem solving, you're kind of just accepting the situation and letting the situation control you. Being able to adapt and pivot is taking your control back and realizing that there's only two outcomes. If you take a risk, you can win. Or if you take a risk, you can stumble and learn a lesson that will then help you win. So if you look at every problem from that perspective, there's really no downside to taking a risk. But many of us are risk averse because we lack the confidence. We don't trust ourselves. Um, We don't follow our gut instincts. And so the book is really about how to recognize what your gut instincts are and gain and grow the confidence that you need to trust your instinct and take a risk and be willing to fail so that you can grow and achieve great success. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. So what has been for you like, first, of all, I love asking this question. I'm going to hang on to that question for a second. I'm going to ask you a different one. What's your favorite part of the book? My favorite part of the book is telling people how to find their gut instinct, because I think um, I put it in a really tangible way. And I think for a lot of us, when we think about um mindset stuff we kind of, if you're not if you're not there yet it's because you're it's intangible and you're kind of nervous on how to tackle it and in the book I give you a tangible way to start understanding yourself and figuring out those gut instincts that you have you have them but you don't know how to recognize them and utilize them and so that's my favorite part of the book because when people read that they reach out to me and they're like oh my god you put that in such a simple actionable way and I didn't know this before. And now it's like a superpower. And I love <laughs> it because it really is. I mean, when you start to that. Yourself, you get in tune with yourself, yeah. you can read other people yep. so much better. And how powerful is that to go into a meeting or, a, you know, meet with a client and be able to read them, engage them in that moment in real time. That's a superpower. That is a superpower. That is an absolute, I love that. It's a superpower. I know we have a mutual friend who has ADD and he says his ADD is superpower. That's a superpower because he just, the man pours out more work than anybody that I, I mean, literally it's hard to outwork that person. Yeah. I mean, there's something, it's funny because we either say we're in a rut or on a roll, but really they mean the same thing. It's either you're doing something positive consistently over and over again, or you're doing something that you don't think is positive. You don't know how to get yourself out. Yeah. But either way, it's the consistent action that um, we're referring to. And a lot of ADD or ADHD people have that where they're just yeah. like, they're on the roll. They're, they're going and they're going. And, get out of the way. Um, yeah. You better get on board or move out. <laughs> That's right. You are exactly. going with or without you. <laughs> That's right. It's going to happen one way or another. So roll with it, baby. Um, you know, 
talk, let's talk about confidence again for a little bit. Let's get, let's go a little deeper into that. Confidence is a, especially in, in what we do, you know, and I think you can actually, I think you can relate to this when you're in the moment in the field of human resources, there's a lot of things that, you know, from experience, from your reading, from your education, that when it doesn't line up, when the scenario doesn't line up and somebody wants to do something, say something that, you know, like everything is telling you, you know, not to go that route, but you don't always have the understanding. You don't have it to back up. You know where I'm going. Like somebody says, well, I want to go ahead and fire this person because, you know, they said blah, 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 blah. And then there's something about what they said. That's like, okay, there's something bad in here. I know it. And I can say, no, we want to hold off on, on letting this person go because I think we're opening ourselves up to risk. We've got some exposure here, but we may not know the justification about it. Right. And I'm sure that comes with an attorney. There's a lot of people that actually are reluctant to put themselves out on the skinny branches like that yeah. and actually make that kind of determination. It's what I call imperfect action in, in human resources. So I think you can relate to that being an attorney that you can say, I've tell me about some of the stuff that you've, you've it found yourself then obviously without, you know, giving the goods up on your, and your clients, but can you share about some instances where you've been faced with that and how you got through it? Yeah. I mean, in, in my own company, I'll give you this example in my own company, I used to get really frazzled when we were like um, in a, in a tough spot with staffing. So if we were having a staffing problem, I would just kind of like be grasping at straws, like trying to get a body in there to replace, you know, whoever left or whatever. And then they not, didn't necessarily um, fit the mold of who I wanted for the company, but I felt desperate and I was acting out of desperation and I wasn't really trusting my gut the way that I felt when I met this person. And always, every time down the line, this person would prove to not fit the culture, not be um, you know, reliable and something would always go wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm a good natured person and I try to, you know, it's, as a business owner, you are the source of income for families, not just one family, yeah, not just yeah. one family. And it's a big responsibility. And I take that very seriously. And so I would used to not trust my gut when it was time to move on from a person either. Yeah. And I would, I would push my feelings aside and give them extra rope to hang themselves basically. And, I, you know, and every time I shot myself in the foot about it and the truth was, when I left Wall Street to go into my company full time, I was not confident. And because I wasn't confident, I was making these decisions that were counterintuitive. And I didn't have the answers. And I'm a, I'm a very logical person. I'm an attorney, so I'm meticulous. And so when I heard my gut tell me something, but I didn't know why, I didn't listen. Mm. Turns out I, my gut was always right. And, you know, <laughs> there's this moment where your body tells you something yeah. and then, then almost instantly your brain kicks in and starts talking you down from your initial reaction and decision. And you have to start to recognize that very slim moment where your body's giving you the goods. It's telling you no. And even if you don't get it and you don't understand it, you have to learn to trust that moment. And that's where the confidence comes in. Because as I built the company and I got more comfortable in my new role and I let go of my former life to go all in, as I developed that confidence, I started to say to myself, you know what? I'd rather shut my door than have the wrong staff in that shop. I, and I would say, F it. If I can't find anybody, then we're gonna close on Tuesday and we'll reopen when we get the right fit and we get the right person. That was an empowering moment. And I think, you know, so many people would feel more empowered and in control if they started to trust themselves. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Trusting yourself is one of the scariest things. <clears throat> it's easier to trust the wrong person than yeah. it is to trust yourself. And a lot of times when we're working for someone else in a company and uh, we're, we're scared to trust ourselves in kind of asking for what we need. And I tell my staff this too, like, if you need something, I'm not a mind reader, tell me what you need. 
I don't, my job, my role in the company is not your role. So your role will necessitate things that I don't necessarily know about right. or I wouldn't think of. So you need to vocalize to me what you need. And that's part of the, um, and I'm sure you were in your space, it's a lot of employees. Um, the employee has to be able to come to their superiors with ideas, trust their gut on feelings that they have, even when they can't fully explain themselves Yeah, um, and explore those things and open themselves up to opportunities to learn. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, um, you know, there's, I think it's kind of a unique view in HR is that when employees do tend to come and say, Hey, listen, I, you know, is it possible that I could go to this or I could do this seminar, I could do this training or, or whatever. It's only, you know, a little amount of money and the company is in a position <clears throat> where they have to be very conservative on, on funds. Like we have been, you know, for the past year. Um, I don't think, I don't think everybody realizes that the company still makes investment in areas that will promote the company to grow. Right. They may not be able to hit everybody. Um, you know, there was a <laughs> when I worked for a, a Fortune 500 company, which will remain nameless on this one. But every year I would put in to go to the Sherm conference, uh, the big HR conference that we have. And every year I would get laughed at for doing it. And. And finally, they said, you know, my boss is like, why do you keep putting in for this? He's like, I can't I can't send you down there. And I'm like because you guys are the ones that keep telling me that you're willing to support my growth. This is the one thing that will support my growth. Yeah. And he stopped for a second and he thought about it and he's like, well, you know, we're not part of the HR department. And he's like, he says, now, he says, now that you've said that, he's like, well, we kind of are. And I said, so does that mean I'm going? He goes, no, <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But at least we had the conversation about it. Right. But that's he, my point is yes. that you you took a risk, right? And you're going to get laughed at or whatever. Oh yeah, it all um, happened. <laughs> and and that's the risk we take. And this is not yeah. just applicable to business or HR or law or whatever. It's applicable to everything, including yep. your personal life is like, you need to put yourself out there and be a little bit vulnerable and have the confidence to shrug it off if it doesn't work out your way. Um and, and that's just the risk that you got to take. And that it really comes with building confidence. And in my book, I talk about it, doing it in a tangible way. For me, it was through yoga and fitness because I was afraid to put myself out there in a more emotional, high level way. So I just took a shot physically and put myself in a position where I didn't know what I was doing. And, you know, I would stumble and fall out of a pose. And some people feel like this at the gym when they're weightlifting and in front of other people. But when you put it in a more tangible form, it's easier to build the confidence that you yeah. need slowly. And then you'll creep out into the more intangible parts of your life. And suddenly you'll be in the room with your boss and you don't care if you get laughed out of the room or not, because you know what you need and you know what you want and you're going to try to get it if you can. That's right. Yeah. It, when you can, when you're capable of rising above your circumstances and still be able to take action, that's an, a, that's a very empowering feeling. And, yeah. and that's something that I wish for everybody to find that courage to be able to do that. When you get to that yeah. point, all of a sudden you, you break down barriers that you didn't realize that you put in your own way. It's so true. I mean, half the battle is fighting yourself and yeah. the things that you feel about yourself that other people don't even think of, you know, no. like we're always so concerned when I went to yoga for the first time, I'm like, everyone's so advanced and they're all going to be looking at me. No one cared. No one was paying attention to me because they're all like working on themselves. Yeah. And then thing that we miss in business and in life is like everyone's in their bubble worried about their own stuff you're not even on their radar yeah only in your mind are you on their radar <laughs> exactly I know you know and it's funny you say that because I have a client who I mean I understand the circumstance right they, they are flooded with him flooded with work all of a sudden and I can't get oh I can't even get a call in and so you know I do fractional HR for this company and if, and, and I know that this guy has literally his schedule is more jammed than mine, which is hard to believe because I'm literally, my schedule is jammed from seven in the morning all the way, sometimes until seven at night. 
And um, to be able to get a hold of him right now is next to impossible. So guess what happens? My favorite phrase in the whole wide world kicks in. Even I'm vulnerable to it. And that is in the absence of information, people make stuff up, you know? And so when I don't hear from him, I have to constantly remind myself, there's nothing going on. He's relying on me to do my job. Right. It's actually alarming sometimes this trust factor. Cause I recently hired someone to do an email campaign for me. I shot them all the information and then you know, I had a conference I was at, I was launching my book and I was just in trust mode. And the guy like reached out, he's like, everything okay? Like you haven't micromanaged me. And I'm like, yeah, that's just not me. Like, yeah, you're, you're good at this. I hired you to do this, like yep. go do it. And I'm going to keep doing my thing. And yeah, you're right. Like sometimes we make that stuff up and, you know, I created a whole course on mindset and it's, there's a special on it right now. It's pivotyourmind.com. It's only $97, but it gives you really tangible ways to start today to get to that level of confidence where, you know, you're willing to take these risks. And I think just little steps can help you build this momentum. So I think deep down, we all want to be empowered. Yeah. I would say that. I would say that's very true. Um, yeah. And I love it. Well, I look, I am so happy that you joined that. Can, can you please let people know how to find your book? Yes. Everything, my courses, my coaching packages, my books all on pivotandslay.com. You can reach out to me directly there too. There's a way to contact me. It's my social media handles. Everything's on there. <laughs> it's all wrapped up in one. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, dear, so very much. And um, I'll see you in Dallas. Soon. Yeah. Can't wait. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.